Well, hi there. I'm here today with two fantastic pet snakes. Ball pythons were on our list of five of the best pet reptiles for beginners. And BCI boas, like my Central American boa here, were on our list of five of the best pet snakes you could possibly get. I have more ball pythons than any other kind of snake by a mile. But I often say that if I could only keep one pet snake, it would be a boa. So which is the best pet snake? Honestly, I'm not sure even I know the answer. And so to figure it out, we're gonna have to put these two head to head and let our three head to head categories figure this out for me and hopefully for you as well. And those categories are awesomeness, because you wouldn't want to own it if it wasn't stinking awesome, expensiveness, and difficulty. Let's start with awesomeness. Both of these snakes have some similarities. They're both heavy bodied constricting snakes that are big without being dangerous or difficult to manage. This is pretty much a recipe for awesome, but they are also different in many ways. Ball pythons are awesome because of their attitude and size. Many ball pythons are very laid back, uninclined to bite, and what I like to call a movie snake, because you could just sit there and probably watch a movie while handling the snake. And that's awesome. Boas, alternatively, are more inquisitive. They tend to explore most of the time when you have them out, so handling a boa is sort of the activity. You don't do something else while handling a boa, as we will probably see while filming this video. While most are uninclined to bite, uh, it is somewhat more likely with your boas than with your ball pythons, and they actually spend most of their time kind of positioned as though they could bite at any moment. So I find myself, especially when I'm around other people with a boa, I find myself checking to make sure that they're in a good mood on a regular basis, whereas with a ball python, I'm almost never concerned that they're getting ready to bite somebody. And if they are, they make it pretty obvious. Ball pythons are awesome because they are essentially a great big snake in a little package, and that's very convenient. Boas, alternatively, genuinely are big snakes, but there's just something wonderful about that giant snake hug that's hard to describe, really. They're fantastic. Ball pythons are really fun to breed, and I'm not saying you have to breed ball pythons if you keep them, but it is something I enjoy about ball pythons, and largely that's because they're easy to breed, and it's easy to keep large numbers of them. The same is not the case for boas. Boas might be my favorite pet snakes, but I have two of them, and that's plenty. I definitely don't want ten of them. One thing, and, and this is important since I've got a ball python and a boa together, is that uh, there are diseases that are communicable between ball pythons and boas, and some of these boas endure much better than ball pythons. If you bring a boa into your collection that carries some of these diseases, it could actually end up killing all of your ball pythons. And so one thing to be very wary of is if you keep both boas and ball pythons, that you should quarantine your boas for probably about a year separate from your ball pythons and, and any other snakes until you know that they're healthy because it will take them a long time to show the symptoms of the diseases that would wipe out your ball pythons in just a few weeks. So that is something definitely to be aware of. I wouldn't recommend just picking up any two snakes, any boa and ball python and holding them together. These are both mine and I've had them for years and years and years and they do shows together all the time and I know they're both healthy, so I'm not worried about it, but uh, that is another reason I don't bring more boas into my collection. I have two. I know they're both healthy. Sometimes I think about getting a male, but then I think, mm, I don't think it's worth the risk to me. I'm going to have to just call this round a draw because both of these snakes are awesome. I just love both of them, but obviously for some fairly different reasons. When it comes to expensiveness, boas are more expensive, period. Now, you can spend a fortune on either snake if you get the right morph. Like, this snake here is a much more expensive ball python than this is boa. But, generally speaking, you can get a inexpensive ball python for less money than an inexpensive boa. Their enclosures are very similar, actually, except because the boa is so much larger, its enclosure needs to be larger, and therefore everything is just more expensive. Boas are simply bigger snakes, and in the world of pet care, bigger generally means more expensive. 
Boas need to eat less often because their metabolism is slower, but they do eat larger feeders. And so those larger feeders are more expensive, but you need to buy fewer of them. So that's kind of a wash. But in general, because boas are bigger snakes, everything is just bigger and therefore more expensive. And so this round goes to the ball python. When it comes to difficulty, there are two things about ball pythons that are more difficult than boas. First of all, they can be finicky eaters. Sometimes they go on long hunger strikes, and that means you can end up wasting some food or ending up with an unexpected new pet. Boas are the opposite of that. They are your cleanup crew. You are never going to end up with wasted feeders if you've got a boa around. Ball pythons also are more prone to bad sheds if the humidity gets too low. Boas also can have this problem, but nowhere near as often as ball pythons do. But boas can also be difficult. Boas are more likely to bite you, especially when they think that they're being fed because they love being fed. And so when you open their drawer, open their enclosure, a lot of the time they're going to be ready to eat. And hopefully you don't reach in there or you will discover how excited they are about food. They're also more likely to bite you when they're out. I've never had this happen, but I know people who've been bit right on the face by their boa while handling it. And that doesn't happen as often with ball pythons unless you've got a particularly grumpy one. It's also a bigger deal when they bite because they're a bigger snake with bigger mouths and bigger teeth and it's just a bigger injury. Boas are also a little bit more inclined to pushing. Ball pythons very rarely push very much, which means they're trying to push their way out of their enclosure, push through a lid or push through a gap. They don't tend to do that that often. Boas will do this sometimes and they can really injure themselves while doing that. So it's definitely something to watch out for with a boa. And dealing with a big enclosure is just more work and more difficult than dealing with a smaller enclosure that a ball python would need. And also, for those of you who are interested, breeding ball pythons is way easier than breeding boas. Except for the fact that you have to incubate the eggs, whereas boas give live birth. While neither of these snakes are super easy, neither of them are super difficult either. These are very manageable snakes for somebody who does their homework and prepares. But there is a reason that I have more than 10 times as many ball pythons as I do boas. And for that reason, this round definitely goes to the ball python as well. In conclusion, ball pythons easily win this head-to-head. -head. They're a far more reasonable pet snake than a boa. But, and this is really important, boas are also fantastic pet snakes and they are totally worth it. They're more difficult, but they are so worth it. I could add five more ball pythons to my collection and hardly even notice it. I can't say the same thing about boas, but if I had to reduce my whole collection of snakes down to just one, it'd be a boa. So if you're looking for a just fantastic snake that's very easy to keep, get a ball python. But if you want possibly the ultimate pet snake, get a boa. As always, like and subscribe. Uh, make sure to check out the videos because we've got a full video on ball pythons and we got a full video on boas. So if you think you've found the one that might be right for you, watch the video that goes with that snake. And if not, watch both videos because that's better anyway. As always, like and subscribe and we hope to see you real soon. Yep. Will's awake. Yep. Michelle's about to go to sleep. Nope. Clint has the right tie on. You got your favorite, followed by your least favorite snake on you. As Are you the kidding? head to head will. This was my other snake that I had said was my other favorite. Alright. Action! Oh. <laughs> 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 oops. This is the best clock we've ever had. <laughs> Don't oops me. That was amazing. <laughs> Where'd she go? Just wrap her on the chair. Do you want me to grab her? Because you're not afraid to hurt anyone. I can handle her. her. No. You know her. Yeah. Yeah, she's wrapping around different things. Where's her head? <laughs> there it is. Okay. What does that look like? <gasps> oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was close. Good thing it has a cement floor to fall on. <laughs> and it's only made of glass. Yes. Mmm. Mmm. Taking the snakes back, I will. Mmm. <laughs>